Hello everyone, in this video we are going to review electrical systems. So we have three main elements in electrical circuits. We have the resistor, the unit for it is O, or we show it with this simple, and that's usually small so we use kilo O. That's a symbol we use, that's an image of a resistor, you can see it's color coded, so based on these colors you would be able to find out what would be the magnitude of that that resistance. Now we have the Ohm's law. Voltage equals resistance times current. And the functionality of resistor is controls the flow of electrical current. The higher the resistance, the lower current you're gonna have and vice versa. Then we have the capacitance, the unit is fraud or should we F. Usually it's pretty large, so we use micro fraud or nano fraud. That's how we show it in our electrical circuit. These are the actual images of capacitors. And then also the Ohm's law would be one over C, the integral of I dt. And the function is to store and release electrical energy. We have inductance, the unit is in Henry, so you we have micro Henry or nano Henry. That's how we show it. This is unlike the capacitor you have L D I D T, so you have the derivative of the current. That's a very common mistake that the students make between the capacitance and and also the inductance. <coughs> and it also because of that derivative component, it opposes the change in current, so it resists the change in current uh, in an electrical circuit. We are also introducing the concept of impedance, so that's the resistance to current. So if you look at the Ohm's law, the higher the, the value, the lower current you're going to have for a given voltage. So in Laplace domain, we, we define the impedance as Vs over Is. So for the capacitance, the impedance value would be 1 over Cs, and for inductance, you have L over S. The impedance can be in series or parallel. If they are in series, they're just simply added together. So here we have two resistors here. So they're simply added together. So it would be R1 plus R2 if you want to find the overall impedance. So make sure not to mistake that with the springs in series when we have K1 and K2. In that case, they are, they are the opposite of this. So if you want to find the overall stiffness would have been K1 plus K2. And we show springs with a similar symbol. So it's very easy to mistake spring and, and resistors. But resistors in series are added together. <coughs> When they are parallel, their inverse will be added together. And we're talking about impedance, so they don't necessarily have to be resistors. So I could have a resistor here, and I could have a capacitor, and then inductor here, so let's call R, C, L. And if I, these are in series, and if I want to find the overall impedance, it would be R plus 1 over C, S plus L, S. That would be the overall impedance. This is the resistance to current. And to find the unknown, whether it's a current or voltage, we have to use Kirchhoff's law in addition to Ohm's law. We have two main Kirchhoff's law. The Kirchhoff's current law, or KCL, which tells us the current in is equal to the current out for any node as used for nodal analysis. So I1 plus I2 equals I3 plus I4. If you look at this image here and want to write the KCL for it, would be I1 plus I2 plus I3 because they're going in, in and I5 and I out are going out. We can take it to the other side as well. Kirchhoff's voltage line is telling us that the through any loop, the voltage drop is zero. So we start from one point and then move on into our uh, circuit. KVL is used for mesh analysis. So mesh analysis is opposed to nodal analysis. 
you're going to solve problems to better reinforce the concept of Kirchhoff's law.